All right, here we go. Welcome to Zephyr 101. I'm Jared, and I'm going to be bringing you into the world of Zephyr, and uh, we'll be talking about pin control today. Uh, pin control is a newer feature of Zephyr. Um, basically, the team wanted to make it a little bit easier to define peripherals and interfaces uh, when you're connecting them, setting those pins. We'll talk about how it was done before. We'll talk about how it's done now, and then also how it kind of works because there are some different levels to it. So thanks for being here today. Um, really appreciate it. This actually came uh, from a suggestion in the community. So uh, everything that comes from you guys uh, is uh, turned into a video usually. So here we go. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Um, and if you want to be notified, hit the bell button, the bell icon. So. And here it is. So this is from Stefan. I've come back to Zephyr for about a year of not using it. <laughs> I get a lot of errors related to pin control and some other things. I kind of abbreviated his message, but the general idea was, um, hey, Robbie, uh, what is pin control? So that's what we're going to talk about. Pin control was a uh, big recent change to Zephyr. And it started really coming in uh, more recently. It just started uh, a lot of the uh, pin definitions and the uh, board files were all kind of changed over to utilize this. Uh, the, the previous version wasn't completely deprecated, so we'll see how that works exactly. But uh, we'll talk about how they're defined and then how to change them and how to take advantage of it. So, <clears throat> so here's how it was done before. This is uh, on an NR52. This is a setting a UART interface, and you can see that we're setting the transmit pin and the receive pin, and just like they're literally just the pin numbers. Now, this is okay, but when it comes down to it, the big problem is, especially for something like the NR52, it actually has multiple ports. So to reference port one with some port number, you actually have to increment whatever port number you start with by 32. So uh, we'll see how in the newer version, at least you can actually reference the different ports and it makes it a little bit more clean. Uh, you don't have to do like back of the napkin math to figure out what pin you want to use. <laughs> um, so you can see we're setting the pin individually. There's nothing related to uh, power management or anything like that. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind uh, and we'll jump, we'll, they'll explain a little bit more as to why that matters in a second. but. Uh, you know, we're just setting a pin number and nothing more. More complex interfaces, you're setting each pin uh, kind of manually, and it's kind of just set that way from the beginning. So if you need to do anything in runtime, you're kind of on your own to do that manually. And uh, w the last point is just me talking about ports, uh, and obviously it's a little more difficult on the NR52 if you're using something on a separate port. So all the newer devices, NR52840, NR53, they have multiple ports. So. so this is what it looks like now. And you can see we're, we're, the port, the, the pins, the transmit RX pins are gone, but we have these like pin control definitions. So we have zero and one. And uh, you can see we're also setting some names. So default and sleep. So these are the default pin control states for Zephyr as it stands today and Zephyr 3.3. So we'll talk about how they're kind of defined and how they're used further down the line. Uh, first thing, so this is actually, so this is the particle xenon definition. So it was just an easier, easy one to find and where they had actually implemented it. Cause as I mentioned before, some of the, um, some of the boards don't have it migrated quite yet. But what they did is they created this separate DTS file, which actually kind of this immediate DTS file that allows you or defines all the pins, at least in their default states. And this is useful for boards that are maybe uh, development boards or things that, you know, they're, they're already configured for that. Or if they're in like a feather form factor, certain pins are typically the dedicated I squared C pins, even though you can uh, you can set them anywhere on uh, any of these NR52, NRF91 boards, so and NR53. So we've created this definition. If you look, there's two groups. One is like the default, and then the other one is the sleep. 
and the uh, you will we'll see in a second but you can see we're defining our, your TXRX and then also setting the pin numbers and ports um, and this is helpful because now you have the option to if you're in a if you're using power management you can actually set these to different pins if you wanted to I'm not 100% so I haven't didn't get a chance to play with how in the power management mode if you're setting it to different pins if or, or you can actually like completely remove them or um, free those pins maybe even set them high Z but uh, that's just something so those are those are the defaults that's just something to keep in mind going forward if you see these drivers they're likely going to have two separate groups to find <clears throat> so we've set them through these group definitions and as far as I can tell you can create as many groups as you want um, the one thing that you can do also is in your runtime if you want to set your own groups I think you should be able to do that um, you might have to create your own um, there are some macros that define the, the kind of the index of what they are and I'll show you guys that in a second but hopefully it'll make sense a little bit but you can the default groups are the runtime and the sleep groups but then you can also kind of create your own uh, let your imagination run wild there's no support in Zephyr for anything beyond that so you're going to be creating it from scratch if you decide to create your own group so keep that in mind um, that's where that so this is just a me showing the um, the the folder with all the DTS files this is like the common file the DTSI the mesh feather and but then you also have the pin control so typically they're I've seen it where they're separated out uh, but uh, they could be very well included in the main uh, DTS file so that's just something to keep in mind so cool we have some defaults but maybe we don't want to use those defaults maybe their interface is on a different set of pins so you'll need to kind of redefine them and the best place to do that is uh, in your application specific overlay file uh, if you actually own your DTS files you can always do it if it's kind of a permanent change but for this uh, we'll be doing it and you know concentrating and doing it in an overlay so <clears throat> So here's, so here's what it would look like in an overlay. This is actually for a PWM peripheral on the NR52, I believe. And this is actually the entrance, uh, the, entr the entry in the overlay file. You can see it's wrapped in this pin control. Um, it's hard to, I wish I put an arrow on that guy, but at the very top there, you can see pin control. It's wrapped in that pin control. And then we set the, the, the groups as we saw before. You can see even though this is a different peripheral, we're setting the, the normal or the default, and then we're also setting the sleep group. So, and we're only interfacing into with one pin. So, um, but you get the general idea. I mean, all this, the pin control stuff, all it is really is just another entry in your, in your, um, your, your DTS file. That's all it is. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing new. There's nothing different. It's just another entry in your DTS file. So that's all it is. And you can also see here, so we've defined those groups and then we're overriding them within your overlay file as well. So we're just resetting pin control zero to like an alternate, the default alternate, and then pin control one to a sleep alternate. So instead of overriding the defaults, uh, they've just, in this case, they've created alternates for both and then they're defined in the overlay file, and then this is also set in the overlay file. So, kind of mentioned it, this is kind of very early days. They got the basics of the pin control, but you can do, you imagine you can probably do a lot of stuff with it if you wanted to, especially during runtime. Um, but right now, like I said, it's right now it's just the default state and then the sleep state. Uh, and in Zephyr, a lot of the functionality is actually wrapped in this pin control uh, macro and by default pin control is turned on so we'll see in a second here how it works so for instance this is the i2c definition in the nordic driver and you can see it's conditionally including the the um, pin control device configuration so whenever you define the pin uh, the pin control for your driver, like if we go back here, doo, doo, doo. 
like if you're setting these, it's actually going to be pulling. It's going to be pulling that pin control zero, pin control one. So, uh, and those are the things that actually get set here. This p config uh, pointer. So, and then um, for those who have not seen my video on power management, you can definitely check it out because this is something where this this PM action is actually where it's actually setting the the drivers or the pins differently depending on the state of the device. So this, if your PM device is enabled, then this function will be available and whenever things go to sleep, it will automatically get run depending on the state of your application. Um, very handy, very cool. And we'll, we'll jump into actually the section. Um, oops, how did that happen? The errors are a little off. But you can see in the resume case, we're actually going to set the pins um, to the default state. So it references that default group that was defined in the uh, in your DTS slash overlay files, and it's just setting it that way. Um, and then here's the other option for so if you're sending an action suspend, it's going to use the uh, the the sleep state or the sleep group to set the uh, pins accordingly. So you can see, so here's the definitions of the two. It's literally just setting zero and one. And you can see they correlate with the actual, um, the numbers of the groups. So if we, I gotta go back again here. Um, you can see here the pin control zero, that's the number it correlates with. So zero maps to the default, one maps to the sleep by default in Zephyr. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you're doing, when you're playing around with these functionalities, that uh, that's how they're how they're mapped currently, kind of by default. Um, so overall, this has uh, been a quick and dirty. It's been about 17 minutes, but hopefully gives you an idea of how the the pin control system works in Zephyr, uh, how it kind of opens up some kind of power management functionality, makes it a little bit easier to find and control your, your interfaces and how you, can, how you can remap them in your application if you want to change it in your overlay. Um, and, you know, just hopefully just makes it a little bit easier for across different platforms. I know, like I said, it was kind of tough to figure out what, what pin I was using if I had a multi-port uh, device like the NR52. So, just making it a little bit easier for um, Zephyr developers to kind of get their code working. Um, so that is it on pin control. And if you haven't already, please uh, go to jaredwolf.com and subscribe. Uh, I do send out emails very occasionally, uh, especially before these live sessions, just to give you a heads up that they are happening. So that's something to check out. And I don't see any questions, but if you do have questions, you can leave them in the description box below and I will try to get back to you and maybe turn it into a Zephyr 101 session in the near future. So appreciate everyone being here and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See ya.